Oh no! You sunk my Scrabble ship! Arr! Yeah, we did it! We defeated the technologist! Now what? Hello and welcome back to another game breakdown. Today we're taking a look at the greatest real-time tactical naval warfare simulator ever made! Battleship! Specifically the 1996 PC version, more specifically the real-time naval warfare simulator part of the game. Not to be confused with the 1993 video game or the 2012, or was it 2012? I don't know, whatever the game based on the movie that sucked. Yeah, that movie sucked. It's not canon to the Battleship universe. Battleship was developed by NMS, NMS Software and published by Infogrames, known today as Atari Interactive, but not that Atari. Infogrames was a French video game developer turned holding company and after several years of mergers, asset selling, and rebranding across its subsidiaries have become Atari SA. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the SA stands for. Though. Pretty much they're one of those companies that buys up a bunch of developers and stuff, rebrands the developer into what the, into their company, but uh, doesn't fire everybody like freaking Hasbro did with Avalon Hill. But we'll get to that in a bit. From what I could find, NMS Software Limited, they were a video game developer started by former Elite Systems staff member Richard Chappell. He named the company after his kids Nicholas, Mark, and Simon. And he main and you know they mainly developed games for the Game Boy and did a lot of conversions, such as the F-15 Strike Eagle game throughout the 90s. Now most of the company's work has gone unaccredited because it may be because some of these games lack credits of any kind. Now the company shut down back in March of 99. Yeah, I couldn't really find all that much about this company or or the person who started it. Now before they shut down, they put out the best damn bad version of Battleship ever made. I'm talking real-time strategy, tactical placements, island invading, AWACS crashing, tankers exploding, fucking mines going into the side of your ship, calculators transformed into scud missiles, there's nothing we can do. Oh, and the only fun escort mission in, in the history of video games. Yeah, fuck every escort mission except these. These are the only good ones. Now, not to mention the hidden story of the Battleship universe tying into the Risk 2210 AD universe. Now, more on that towards the end. Being a PC game from 96, I had to use the old computer and the uh, Windows XP virtual machine. Yes, I own a copy of the game. You see this? You see this, you idiots who think virtualization is bad? I have a disc copy. Oh, yeah, I... You can't see that, never mind. Now, I mainly did that because it was a lot easier to record on the uh, on my new computer with the VM. And plus, the old computer, I kept having sound problems, but I eventually got that fixed. And, you know, I don't really know how long that thing's gonna last, okay? I'm trying to save it from Micro Machines. That game will not run on these newer computers. I had a Windows Vista virtual machine running. Because the Star Force DRM stabbed the fuck out of every other Windows operating system except XP. And, yeah, it did it to Vista, too, but there was no one out there saying that. And, uh... Yeah, it, it came out really weirdly and didn't work, even with the patches. So, we're saving that old computer for that. Now, moving on to the main part of this video. Battleship has two main game modes. Classic and a real-time naval warfare simulator. The classic mode is just a regular battleship, but on the computer. And it was meant to introduce players to the way the game is played. And also the cool animations and sound effects that happen every time a weapon is fired and a shot misses and a hit is struck. Although, if you play this game for long enough in any mode, eventually the sound effects cut out. And it's... Yeah, yeah, it's the game, it's not It's not the computer. It doesn't matter what computer you're on, they, they cut out after so long. The animations are half of the fun of this game. All 16 bits of them. Now, it only looks like that because I blew it up. Now, most of them are customized for the situation they're portraying that triggered them, and they're a great way to tell you when shit hits the fan while you're trying to tell your fleets what to do. They can get distracting if you're not paying attention, and if you let the menu screen idle long enough, it'll cycle through three or four compilations of animations made for the, for the game. Yeah, it's really cool. 
Now, not all the animations are accurate for the situation that triggers them, but I'd be here all morning if I went through all of it. Now, the second and best part of the game is the real-time naval warfare simulator. This mode is broken down into three game types. Practice, world domination, and my favorite, scenario. Also the craziest. Now, there are four difficulties. You know, you got novice, skilled, expert, and master. I don't think selecting a difficulty really matters with some of these scenarios. Now, back in the day, there was an online multiplayer for this game, but uh, I didn't really go in. I'm not going to try and go into that because it's Battleship. How, how do you think the multiplayer is going to go? It also says something about hot seat multiplayer, but I couldn't really figure out what the hell they were talking about. Almost each game mode puts you against one, two, or three opponents based on your choice. Although, uh, it really just makes things more complicated, especially in the scenario type. Although, not all of the maps allow you to have more than one opponent. Now, practice will get you used to the game and prepare you for the other two types. It's also where a classic battleship is situated. See right up there. Clash at Sea teaches you the basics of fleet maneuvering. Air superiority will introduce you to the basics of using carriers and aircraft, mainly helicopters and jets. Capture the Islands introduces you to islands, and islands are another great part of this game. They're used to repair, refuel, and resupply your fleets, and later fill up and drain tankers. You can also put troops on them, but there's not there's only one game type that, that uses all that. Enemy islands can be captured via invasion. Now you can only do this if ports and missile batteries have been destroyed. At least I'm pretty sure you can only do that then. Now this is where you'll notice all of the player and enemy ships and islands and aircraft are all the same. Normally I'd assume this was to make things simpler, but god damn it, here at Kansas game we're not normal. I made this for God's sake. Look at that. So I think there's more to it than just making the game easier to make. Now, the next game type is World Domination. It's mainly just the game's way of showing you all the different maps they made and uh, getting you used to managing multiple fleets and aircrafts. Most of these maps, you can play against more than one opponent, except I think just the last two. You can also change your fleet value. Basically, this is what determines how many ships you can have total. You get five fleets for each map. Three normal ship fleets and two sub-fleets. The sub-fleets are my favorite until the choppers cut it down. No, my sub, why? Oh, how the fuck are they getting to them? I'm kind of surprised they don't have torpedo bombers, but those might be outdated. Oh, wait a minute, there's no mainland in any of these maps, or animations. The third type is the scenarios. It's what this game has been building you up to the whole time. Each scenario must be completed by either killing the enemy fleet before they kill you, or completing the objective. Most of the time, it's easier just to take out the enemy fleet, but there's a few missions where that's impossible. For example, in Spy Satellite, you're outnumbered and have to find the satellite or destroy the enemy ship that found the satellite. Yeah, I never figured out that mission. In fact, I lost. It's one of the two missions I couldn't do. The other one was a, what was it, oil core? It's one of the oil type missions. Now there are four categories of scenarios. Convoy, Island Hop, Oil War, and Total War. Basically, Convoy has you escorting ships in five unique scenarios. Island Hop has you invading and or searching for hidden islands in various scenarios. What the hell is a technologist? Why are they building islands? Oil War has you protecting or destroying oil tankers and oil rigs. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the oil rigs. They uh, they don't really do much but act as obstacles. Total War is one scenario of the AI trying to recover a satellite with information about geological changes to the Earth. And two more of the AI just trying to invade islands. Yeah, the first two are easy, the last one, no. Spy satellite's hard. Oil spill is impossible. How, how are you supposed to beat the time limit while the enemy bases and rigs are hidden? And once you find them, if you go out of radar range after finding them, you don't find them again. No, my AWAC! I needed that to find them! Oh yeah, you only get two fleets, and you have no idea how much time is there. Also, the enemy fleet AI is, like, way harder in this mission. Nuclear Threat has the best ending animation, and it's really the only unique ending one. All the ending animations are the same. You either lose and see a grid catch fire and everything's burning. No! Everything's burning! Or you get to see it, you know... America, or whatever the fuck the nation's called, win. Red, white, blue smoke coming out, and all this and that. It's really kind of neat. Spy satellite was just confusing as hell. There's no indication of where the satellite is, even on your radar. And you're outnumbered like four to one. I destroyed like three or four of their fleets, and there were still more fleets. And I took over their island, and I still lost. Yeah, the AI difficulty jumped up in this mission. I was playing on novice. Also, you have limited ammo in these scenarios. I almost forgot. Those little numbers aren't just there for fun, you know. You only get 30 shots of that heavy, ultra heavy. Let's talk about the gameplay. After you select what type and mode you want to play, you get to organize your fleet. Practice and world domination, you can fill out your fleet however you want based on the points available. But damn it, I want all the battleships. I can't have six? Why not? It's called Battleship, isn't it? Fine, I'll use another ship. Now, in scenario, your fleets are filled out for you. You can't pick it. You can reposition them if you want. You can reorganize where each ship is, but you can't do anything other than that. Next, you get to position your fleet anywhere within the blue line. 
Now, this is all randomized each time you load up a game, you know, where the island, where your islands are, where your blue line is, all that kind of stuff. I think on world dominations it's not, but I think on scenarios they all are. Now, once your game world is loaded, you can begin. The game is set up on a large grid. On the bottom of the screen, you have the score. The top right is the radar satellite reading. Top left is a screen that shows animation of where the enemy ships and islands get triggered. It basically shows what the enemy is seeing for their animations. It's kind of a neat little uh, box there. Now, the bottom left is a fleet and island overview, and it basically can, you know, tell you when your ships are getting attacked or when they see something. Yeah, it gets kind of annoying. Oh, I passed by a neutral land. Alert! Alert! We're, they're, they're here! It's like, that's a, it's a gray. It's not going to hurt you. They're here! They're going to kill us! <sighs> Fine, I'll invade the island. Bottom right, that's your overview for rigs and civilian fleets. Most of the civilian fleets don't have any military ships, but a few of the uh, a few of the scenario fleets give you like two or three destroyers or frigates or cruisers to like defend them. They don't do much. On the uh, right side of the screen, there's a zoom in and out deal. 90% of the time, unless you're looking at a fleet to fire or trying to figure out where to shoot, you'll be zoomed all the way out because zooming in just kind of lets you see the islands. Yeah, they're kind of cool, I think. Meanwhile, in the background, animations are popping in and out, giving you a goddamn seizure. Ha! Ah! 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 It won't stop! I can't see my fleets! I just want to play the game! I don't know if you can shut those off or not. I, I don't know. Now, in-game, when you select a fleet, you can set them up to, like, four different alerts. You got green, yellow, orange, and red. I don't really know what the point of this is, because it's not like it sets them on a defensive pattern. What does that are the three different defensive stances. Now, these defensive stances kind of keep your fleet on edge, and they're, they're, like, the closest thing to fleet automation you get. You got stand against missile attacks, which, you know, triggers a little animation that deals shooting down missiles. The next one is stand against sub attacks, which, if you have a carrier, triggers a, you know, helicopter taking off that's going to, like, blow up the subs. And the third one is stand against air attacks, which if you have a carrier it just triggers you know the f-15s or whatever these are taking off and shooting stuff down but only if you have a carrier now for subs it's a little different they can either silent run or activate countermeasures not really sure what countermeasures are but silent running is pretty much they submerge and they can't be detected until they start shooting and then they just like freaking surface and just get blown out of the water they only have two stand down is the other one not all weapons can be fired for every ship for example subs can't use torpedoes against islands which is weird because they have animations of that happening i guess destroyers can't use torpedoes against islands either battleships can't fire their ultra large heavy guns at submarines you know, i don't think you can use missiles against subs either i don't really know what triggers them to, sub to surface or submerge because Putting them on silent running them has them submerged, but then they show animations. Yeah, not all the animations are tailored to each and every situation. Some are, some are. As a ship gets damaged, it loses its weapons based on where it's damaged. What do you mean I can't fire my main guns? That's all I got left! I need those damn torpedoes! Now, that's where islands come in. By docking, you can repair and resupply each individual ship. It's awesome. It's, even after you invade an island, you can use that island to resupply. Now, it didn't help me in Spy Satellite. I still died. Aircraft, however, are the only thing you cannot replace. Once they're gone, they're gone. And those carriers are pretty much useless. Yeah, to move your fleets around, it's pretty simple. You just, you get like six little waypoint squares and you know it's just like any other rts you know where you can set up waypoints if you have them moving where they're gonna get stuck they'll they'll get stuck and they'll like try to move like two squares they'll never get unstuck you'll have to like cancel all the waypoints and set them going around i only had that happen a couple times like i was saying earlier nothing can be automated except when you send aircraft on patrol that's that's the best way to just sit back and chill it's like oh you're attacking me with subs defend against sub attacks yeah watch my choppers cut you down you also have to target every shot in action which it gets kind of tedious but it's also half the fun of the game but it does get kind of overwhelming when you're trying to run like five fleets and four islands and aircraft flying around everywhere and it's like go on bombing run oh we're gonna take off and land it's like i said go on bombing run what are you doing watch out for mines there's no way to destroy them pretty sure the neutral mines will hit you too you can't also deploy your own and you'll never run into them i never really used them all that much I probably should have used them more. All right, let's talk about the music. There is none. There's just a lot of really accurate sound effects and a little fun tune that plays while you're installing.
Now, you can find this game on Abandonware, and the sequel is, it's just a sequel name. NMS Software shut down and had nothing to do with the sequel. It's called Battleship Surface Thunder. I was going to kind of lump it into this review, but it, it just it's just a sequel in name. I'm pretty sure they were just writing off the coattails of this game. Well, that's about it. I know this was kind of a shorter one. That's because there wasn't much to this game. It had a simple concept, fun game modes, and a very realistic naval warfare simulator with some disturbing scenarios between a random dictator and technologist and wait a minute... Yeah, you never see the mainland. All the factions use the same ships and aircraft and technology. And technologists are building islands and AWACS crash randomly. Oh yeah, when when uh, aircraft run out of fuel, they don't land. They just crash for the hell of it. It's really irritating. It's like, I have no island and my AWACS gonna die. It has like two minutes of fuel. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, I lost a lot of AWACS. I think there's more tier than I first thought. All right, all right, bear with me here for a minute. None of this is confirmed and like, I didn't try to contact anybody or find any evidence in the game files. I kind of sifted through most of it, but hear me out. No mainland must mean that at some point the ocean submerged most of the land mass, all right? It's 96, so why are battleships being used? The Most of them were retired back in 1992, was when the USS Missouri was decommissioned, so that was the last battleship. Dude, that ship is in so many fucking movies, games. That ship is famous. Now, that ship is a celebrity. Now, everybody using the same technology tells me it was all developed around concepts from the 50s, 60s, and 70s American and NATO naval military technology. The fact that a small dictator can be like, oh, I'm gonna force you four islands to sign this treaty. Because that's one of the scenarios. You take over his islands before your island sign a treaty. It's like, what? Aren't we a huge power? Why are we... What? They never really made sense to me. It kind of reinforces the theory that everyone lives on islands or underwater or some kind of island nation. Now, based on all that information, I think that around the end of World War II, kind of like the 40s and 50s around that time, something happened to trigger the oceans to rise and flood the entire Earth. Possibly Nazis launching nuclear weapons at the, you know, the poles and melting them, or maybe using ancient or paranormal means of cursing the Earth to become a water world. It's possible this led the remaining nations and, you know, most of the Navy surviving to kind of work together to figure out what to do. We never see floating water cities or, like, big island cities or anything like that. So, uh, I think it's safe to safe to say they resorted to building underwater cities. You know, similar to the ones portrayed in Risk 2210 AD. Now, those oil rigs scattered around the map, they may not just be oil rigs, but elevators for the cities or, or like, maybe you know, radar platforms. Now, maybe that's what the islands the technologists were building for. You know, maybe they were trying to just like, oh, hey, we're tired of living in these underwater cities. This sucks. I want to see the sun again. We're going to build out that. But, uh, yeah, more on that here in a minute. Now, in the beginning, it's the remaining nations probably agreed on some sort of treaty to, you know, just work together to develop new and necessary, kind of, you know, stick to the same basic technology, have some sort of military to deal with pirates and all that kind of stuff. Tread carefully into the future. Now, I imagine at first things went pretty well. You know, they all worked together, pulled the resources, killed all the greedy assholes who tried to, you know, destabilize everything. And set the world up to survive. Possibly expand into space. They had to expand into space. They have satellites, for God's sake. Uh, something must have happened, or I should say begin to happen, you know. A new faction, the technologist must have risen up. Oh yeah, a technologist is pretty much somebody who applies technology for its proper use. I'll put up the, uh, you know, definition here based on the deal. They seem to want to build islands and escape the underwater cities. But the other nations were divided. Most of them were happy the way things were. But, you know, as things always do, the peace began to break down. Paranoia, fear, technologists gaining allies year by year. Most nations, shit hit the fan. The whole world started to break down. Their tentative, barely held together peace kind of just collapsed. I honestly kind of imagine most of the cities didn't really give a fuck. They're like, yeah, we just live here. We're, we're, bar we're getting by day to day. We all work together. Or it's like, we all need to work together or we're gonna fucking die. And they were probably not really caring about the whole power struggle going on about on the surface. On the seas and the islands, identical fleets battled and engaged each other trying to control as many islands as they could. Or at least take out the technologists, because, you know, fuck that. Now, years later, really nothing's changed. The underwater cities are just chilling and surviving. The few remaining fleets are fighting for power and trying to secure the, once rem the one remaining nuclear weapon to keep it away from the powers that would use it. Until one day... One of the nations that still had satellites discovered the waters were receding. In an attempt to bring down the satellite for data collection, it crashed and fell into the wrong hands. Oh no! Yeah, I'm not sure who it fell into. This, this is all just speculation. But eventually, you know, everyone kind of figured out that, you know, the sur land's coming back. We don't have to live in these goddamn cities. At the same time, that land wouldn't be viable because, you know, 
It takes about two years for soil to reoxygenate after being underwater. Every power on the surface began a war to gain control of as much land as possible as it appeared. Over time, the underwater cities became surface cities again, but the uh, devastation continued and eventually nuclear weapons and the means to build them were recovered and used. Because, you know, depending on when the flood happened, it's possible they developed nuclear weapons but kind of lost the means and will to make them. Stuff happens and eventually nuclear weapons were used, kind of decimating the planet. They pretty much decimated the planet with atomic weapons, forcing most of the remaining civilian population to live on coastline cities that were still underwater, while commanders in weird-looking suits led giant machine armies against one another in a uh, attempt to take control of the world, and possibly during peace. Look at this map! The year is 2210 AD. Or the entire game takes place on another planet. Now, I wouldn't be saying this, but uh, I looked it up, and uh, Hasbro bought Avalon Hill in 1998. They're the ones who owned the rights to Risk at the time. They fired all its employees. And Risk 2210 AD was released in 2001. See, this was around the same time Hasbro still had control of Battleship, the rights to it. Yeah, I'm not really sure how that all worked, but they had control. It was really, it's, same, it's close enough, close enough, all right? You know, it's, it's close enough. Now, at the same time, Hasbro controlled the rights to Battleship and Risk 22-1080. So it's possible. Like, it's possible they're in the same universe, you know. But, you know, this is all just a fan theory. I hope you enjoyed the video. This breakdown was way more fun to make compared to the Fallout Tactics breakdown. Oh my god, that one just took so long and so much work. And, you know, at first it was fun to play, but, I mean, when you, when you sit there for six hours just trying to finish the game, and then you spend days just trying to write the goddamn script for it, and then you spend, I mean, it took me an hour and 45 minutes to record everything. Yeah, you know that hour and 11 minutes runtime? Yeah, that was cut down. Well, okay, to be fair, it was cut down to like 45, 50 minutes because I, you know, cut in all those animations. But the original recording time was way longer. And, uh, yeah, I hated making that review. I'm not, I'm not going to make one that long for a while. And honestly, the breakdown wasn't boring. It, it keeps you going. But, I don't know. Now, it's probably going to be a little while before the next breakdown. I'm working on a larger project right now. So the uh, next breakdown's... I don't know. What, what's today? Today is the August 10th. So, what is it? Oh, Thursday. So, yeah, the next bro breakdown probably won't be till March of next year. The game's not going to take me that long to play, but... You know what? It might speed up faster. I do a lot more work in the wintertime. I have more time at night to work on this stuff. Yeah, this ain't my full-time thing, okay? No, I, I, I do excavation work and tree clearing, okay? So, yeah. Yeah, until then, just uh, enjoy the me and Jeff's playthroughs. And he may start doing reviews, too, so that might come out. I don't know, his computer's broke right now, so I don't know when, when that's ever going to come out. But he, his, uh, his first playthrough, breakdown, review, whatever the hell you want to call it, he's going to try to do a Star Wars Rebellion, which that's not one I was going to do. That was one I was going to kind of link in with another game. Until then, just, you know, enjoy the uh, in, enjoy the GMVs, breakdowns, and the, you know, I may have another another video coming out about the Dead Space Oracles, but that'll be a lot smaller video. Anyway, stay tuned for the next breakdown, which will have the only crossover to take place in the time period people actually wanted to see this happen. No! Nobody wanted those movies. No, okay, the first one, it's okay. It's second, no. God damn it, Fox. You, you, you had the opportunity to make the coolest goddamn crossover, but you blew it. And now you're Searchlight Studios, and you don't suck. And now you got the, the one dude who made the original movie just hating on this franchise. But you know what, whatever. But yeah, stay tuned for that breakdown. It's going to be pretty cool. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one.
goddamn mines.